Hello, I'm Jeff Shiver, Managing Principal with People and Processes. Today I want to share a little tip with you around using the right resources with regard to how you approach your PF curves. And let me explain a little bit more. When we take a PF curve, for example, and this is just uh, one that's set up for the user wanting 100 GPM as an example, or 150 being received, or some number, it really doesn't matter about the scale. The point is, let's say we had a bearing that was in the act of failing. And in its worst case, right before we reach total failure, what might we have? Well, depending on the situation, we might have fire, as an example. Well, what's a good indicator of fire? What happens before that as we back up the curve? Well, we might have smoke. And before smoke, we might have heat. Now, when we start talking about how we can detect some of these things, and we can actually start adding some of the preventive, uh, or excuse me, predictive maintenance approaches as part of this. So when we get heat, where can we find heat? Well, using infrared, infrared as an example. Well, on the curve, where can we find that? Well, maybe back up here somewhere. So we have infrared here, but in between the infrared and the actual heat piece, we might very well be able to find it just simply we're using one of the operator's uh, sense of feel. Just using your hand or the back side of your hand, whatever. And what about uh, from another operations perspective? What about, uh, uh, let's say, vibration? Well, we can feel that again. So we can feel heat. We can feel vibration. We can hear noise. And you might ask, well, how can we, we talk about vibration and feeling that using the senses or hearing it from the noise standpoint? Obviously, we can find out with vibration here. And we'll put it here on the chart. We can get into a debate about whether it plays out in front of infrared or not. I will share with you that typically, though, when you back up the curve even further, ultrasound comes in before vibration. And actually, NASA uses ultrasound in advance of vibration for certain bearing race uh, cracks and things like that. And of course, you know, we can stack up in here oil analysis as an example. And, but the point I wanted to make with this is at this particular point here, we basically have run to failure. We've gone too far and we're probably not meeting the, the user requirements anymore that we set up here at 100 GPM. But the other piece to consider is that in this, we can simply do uh, operator inspections. And that's in advance of doing predictive technologies. And predictive technologies are great, but they tend to be expensive. And the challenge for us is this. How do we actually, in this particular window, find things in the act of failing and proactively have time to find it, to make the repair before it functionally fails. And many times, operations or maintenance inspections give us that window that we have enough time to proactively plan and schedule, and we can reserve these type of inspections for more cost-effective approaches around more critical components, as an example. So don't be afraid to use operator or maintenance and inspections. Don't just stick simply to the proactive technologies because those cost a lot of money typically. So, hope you enjoy the tip. Have a great day. I'm Jeff Shiver, Manager Principal, People and Processes.